Asura, is this truly the path you set me on? A fellow wanderer on the path. Greetings, I'm Vastari. If you plan to explore the Ashen Scar, I'd advise caution. Some dark intention has this canyon in a vice grip. An inopportune time for a visit, hmm. Then again, perhaps we're meant to be here. An undead awakening. As intense as it is unstable, the corpses emerge in fits and starts for now. But I can sense more stirring below, hundreds more. If left unchecked, these creatures may spill out into larger elsewhere, perhaps even lands beyond. Yes, maybe you can. I find myself having difficulty focusing. If the force that reanimates these corpses exerts pressure on the mind as well, that would be profoundly unsettling. I intend to search these ruins for answers. Will you join me? I'm glad to have your company. As I said, something about this place puts me ill at ease. Now, are you ready to proceed? Right, forgive me. A simple name is hardly sufficient introduction given the circumstances. As I said, my name is Vastari. I'm a mage and loyal servant of Azura, the queen of dawn and dusk. I'm also something of a wanderer, like you. The very same. I find that title rather coarse. But ultimately, titles tell more about the speaker than they do about the subject. Wouldn't you agree? In these lands, she's called Azura, queen of the night sky and mother to all Khajiit. Love. With Azura, everything begins with love. A love that is fierce, possessive, even cruel, but always true and impossibly deep. I mean no offense, but worshipping dead gods always struck me as a fantastically dull and unfulfilling tradition. Yes, though not as fervently as they used to. A prophet named Riddhari Data revealed the secrets of the riddle to the Khajiit some years back, essentially creating a child's religion that sanded down the sharper edges of Khajiiti theology. I always hate to see a rich tradition usurped by a flimsy one, but ultimately it's the Khajiit's choice. What matters is that Azura loves them, and what my lady loves she always reclaims, eventually. It's the site of an ancient Khajiiti temple to Azura, the Temple of the Hidden Moon. I conducted some research on the temple before I set out from Grafwood, but didn't find much. Something happened here that the Khajiit aren't keen to dredge up. Undoubtedly, what little scholarship I did find referred to a sprawling nest of catacombs beneath the temple, filled with Khajiiti dead. The adepts of the Hidden Moon watched over them, I think. Beyond that, there's nothing. That's the hope, yes. Azura's influence runs deep here, deep and even than whatever malevolent force stirred up the undead. She'll guide us to the answers. Of that, I have no doubt. Excellent. Let's be on our way, then. The Hidden Moon Temple stands at the very center of the Ashen Star. The adepts who lived there vanished centuries ago, but the air still crackles with arcane energy, necromantic energy. But there's more, a malice that... by Azura, that sound! Wait! My friend, wait! Forgive me, I didn't expect to face such resistance. Yes, and no. It felt as though I was struck blind and deaf, save for the sound of a beating heart. I think something tried to drive me back, then relented and tried to claim me instead. Oh, there's an intention to it, a greed and a hunger. You seem unaffected. Good. I can't go any farther. Not until I understand the nature of this event. Take these descrying stones and place them throughout the canyon. They'll allow me to perceive this threat from a distance. 
The three stones act in concert, so be sure to place them in a broad pattern that encompasses the whole area. Now, you should set out. The sooner you place the descrying stones, the sooner I can locate the source of this evil. No, not at all. Truth be told, necromancy is my primary area of expertise. The study of souls, to be more specific. I trust that won't be a problem. So you are. I only hope that you're using your skills for the betterment of Tamriel. Necromancy often makes a meal of less disciplined mages. It's a school fraught with temptations. Of course, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. An experiment of mine. Expended soul gems reinfused with the smallest trace of my own spiritual essence. They allow me to perceive the world as lingering spirits do, making the invisible flow of animus and magic visible. Well, for one thing, they'll allow me to conduct my search from far away. No small thing, given what just occurred. Once I see the flow of magic are in this place, I should be able to trace the corrupt energies back to their source. Perhaps. I hope so. At the very least, it will give us a fuller sense of what we're dealing with here. Good. I sense, yes, some kind of wards infused into the architecture, though weakened by the march of time. Someone tried to prevent this.
corruption here is just suffocating, like a dark fog rising from below, bidding the dead to serve. Excellent. My sight grows clearer. I see a maze of catacombs below. Undead rise there too. And something else. Ah, there's a concentration of dark energy in the exposed tomb at the center of the scar. Meet me there. Magics are useless here, whichever Zura. Flee while you can. The hour of my return has come. Thank you for acting quickly, friend. The situation appears much worse than I thought. The being you just encountered, it was the shade of a dark lich, an undead Khajiit possessing unimaginable power. You just shattered one of his phylacteries. A focus, like an arcane vessel or container. Think of the stones I gave you earlier. Those contain a sliver of my essence, but nothing of what makes me who I am. Phylacteries contain much larger fragments of the soul. Powerful, but dangerous tools. You destroyed one, yes, and the shade simply taunted us. There must be others. If we're to have any hope of stopping this lich, we'll have to find and destroy all of them. A daunting prospect. They're probably well hidden. Hm, I admire your optimism, unfounded though it may be. Did you notice the body near the orb? He met his end recently. I intend to find out what he knows. Place this stone in the center of the room. It should ease the summoning process. No, nothing so complicated. I mean only to open the door for his spirit to speak to us. An invitation to converse. Nothing more. He may appear, 
He may not. But I think he'll want us to know what he learned, for vengeance sake, if nothing else. Your kindness does you credit. But we can't afford to pass over an opportunity like this. This lich will make very few mistakes. I promise you, if the soul cries out for relief or escape, I'll grant it without hesitation. It will amplify my senses, just like before. Finding one soul among millions is no small feat. Summoning rituals require extreme precision, friend. Darker things than mortal souls wait for summons too. In necromancy, even small mistakes are fatal. It will take all my concentration to maintain the ritual, so the questioning falls to you. I ask only that you proceed quickly. As I said before, an open door to spirit realm can draw unwelcome attention, so be concise, all right? No, nothing so complicated. I mean only to open... Stand back. Mithra las zelanfenal queridanere. With him. You... you must... you must listen! Speak with him, quickly. We do not have much time. This one feels his spirit slipping away. The Dark Lich, Arun Kal, has awakened. He rises like foul smoke from beneath the ashen scar. Arun Kal, the ancient defiler, the Dark Adept, destroyer of the Hidden Moon. If he regains his full power, Death and horror will scour all the sands of elsewhere. The orb. I tried to claim it for myself. It sent me to a realm of nightmares where Arum Kal's spirit reigns as king. He tore my soul to pieces, then used the remnants to awaken his body and everything else in this cursed place. He. No more. Release me, please. Azura, have mercy on him. I'd say he learned his lesson. Well done. I had hoped to glean a bit more, but that name is enough. Arum Kal the Dromathra. Arum Kal the Moonslayer. Mages whisper his name as they do that of the Worm King Manimako. Oh, I thought him long gone. Seems I was wrong. Whatever wards the disciples of this temple put in place to keep Arunkal bound are failing, and it's unlikely we'll find the means to mend them. We'll have to deal with this threat head-on. For that, I need your help. The Kajiti spirit called Arunkal the Dark Adept and the Ancient Defiler. Could Arunkal's fate and the fate of the Hidden Moon Adepts be intertwined? The former residents of the Hidden Moon Temple. They vanished centuries ago, but the ruins of their sanctuary remain. If they manage to seal a lich like Arum call away, they clearly possess skills and techniques we can use. Yes, probably. Memories run deep in places like this, and where there are memories, there are spirits. Helpful ones, I hope. With any luck, one of them will answer our questions. Now, it's a long climb to the temple summit. Are you prepared? I'm going to take a moment to make sure we didn't miss anything here. I'll meet you at the temple summit soon, unless you needed something. Well, for starters, he's more than just a lich. He is also a Dromathra. Yes, sticks in the throat a bit, doesn't it? Dromathra means something like dark spirit in the Kajiti tongue, but I think that definition falls woefully short of describing them accurately. Something unique. Some mages believe they're Daedra, who serve the Dark Prince Namira. Others contend that the Dromathra are just mortal Kajiti souls held in her thrall. Neither definition sounds right to me. There are things about Kajiti souls that even I, a master of soul conjuring, don't understand. For instance, only Khajiit can become Dromathra. This indicates there's some hidden capacity or dreadful flaw unique to the race. A duality. 
Yes, a tension between two opposing natures. A choice of some kind that no other race has to make. It's a fascinating puzzle. If we survive this, and that is a significant if, I intend to give it my undivided attention. Lichdom is a state of being, the most sophisticated form of undeath. While lesser necromancers busy themselves with other people's souls, liches turn inward, manipulating their own soul to gain power and extend their life. This is just academic curiosity, right? Because I can't overstate the risks. To become a lich, the necromancer must press their soul through an arcane vessel called a phylactery. This requires a lifetime of study, mind you, and fierce power of will. Souls contain tremendous power, but they place certain checks on mortal will. Divesting the two, soul and mortal form, removes these boundaries. The effect is a virtually limitless magical horizon. The process extracts a heavy toll, of course. Traveling through the phylactery can tear a lich's psyche apart, resulting in madness. Long separation from one's soul can lead to apathy and megalomania as well. In almost all cases, lichdom becomes a curse in very short order. A few. We should get back to the task at hand. I know little more than what I've already told you. I can guess its age from the state of the masonry and the religious motifs, I suppose. Early first era, perhaps. The hidden moon adepts venerated Azura above other deities. That much is clear. Well, modern Kajiti teachings claim a third moon appears in the sky to usher in the birth of a new main, the spiritual leader of the Khajiit. Perhaps there was a time when it meant something else. That would make sense. My lady carries a single moon in her right hand, and legends speak of her parting the Tamrielic moons, Massa and Secunda, with a whisper. Stands to reason that she might hold dominion over this third hidden moon too.